Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are going to be starting some uh, AP Physics Free Response questions that are on um, energy, work and energy. So these are old free response questions from the AP Physics B exam, but like before, it's just good to practice all kinds, even if it's not the Physics 1 free response questions. Um, and um, I encourage you to sort of pause the video, try to do the problem on your own, and then come back to uh, once you've completed it or gotten as far as you've gotten and you've gotten stuck. But you, you should at least try to do the problem first before continuing on the video. So here we go. I have a block of mass, block A, mass 2 kilogram, block B of mass 8 kilogram are connected by a spring of spring force constant 80 in negligible mass. This system is being pulled to the right across a horizontal frictionless surface by a horizontal force of 4 newtons. As shown, calculate the force that the spring exerts on the two kilogram block. But constant acceler. So both blocks are, are moving. So let's let's do some free body diagrams. That's always the start. When you have a bunch of forces, it's always important to do the free body diagrams. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a block here. So this is the eight kilogram block. Now, it's a frictionless surface, so I really don't need to worry about the vertical forces here, just the horizontal ones, so I'm going to exclude the, um, the vertical ones, although they should be there. I have four newtons to the right, and I have the spring here. Well, we'll just draw them all. I have mg, and I have the normal force. Okay, That's the free body diagram for that one. Now the equation for this free body diagram, it's accelerating to the right with some acceleration A, which we don't know what the acceleration is. So I know that the net force, if I say the direction of motion is positive, positive x in this direction, then the net force is 4 newtons minus the spring force, and that equals ma. Well, that's well, ma, right? F equals ma, and um, m is 8 kilograms. 8a. So this is my equation. 4 minus the spring force equals 8a. Now I don't know a or the spring force, so I need to do a free body diagram of the 2 kilogram block. And this is the 2 kilogram. Now the the, the spring exerts the same force because the, the spring is trying to contract. It's trying to pull in. So it's the same force, same spring force there. And uh, mg or force of gravity and the normal force and that's it for this guy right there's no no other force acting on him so his equation he is also accelerating with the same acceleration as this guy a right because that's what they told us both blocks experience equal constant acceleration now his net force in the x direction is just fs and that equals 2 ma which is 2a so Fs would equal 2A. So now I can, um, there's two ways. I can solve for A and F sort of simultaneously because I have two equations and two unknowns. So the simplest thing is to solve for A maybe. So I'm going to plug Fs equal to 2A. So this becomes 4 minus 2A equals 8A or 4 is equal to 10A or A is equal to 4 over 10, oops, which is 0.2 meters per second squared. Um, and then the, for the spring force would be 2 times A, which is 2, wait, is that point? No, this is point 0.4, I don't know why I said point 0.2, uh, times point 0.4, and that's equal to point 0.8 newtons. Okay, so point 0.8 newtons. Calculate the extension of the spring. Well, now that I know the spring force, it's equal to K delta X, the extension. So the, the delta x is how much it's is uh, fs over k. The, the spring force is 0.8 newtons. And the spring constant is 80 newtons per meter. And so that's uh, 0 0.01 meters, I believe. Yep, 0 0.01, 1 over 100 um, meters. Or that's... Um, one centimeter is another way to write it. C. The system is now pulled to the left as shown below with both blocks again experience equal constant acceleration. 
Is the magnitude of the acceleration greater than, less than, or the same as before? Well, overall, the whole thing weighs 10 kilograms. If I think about a free body diagram over the whole thing, this is a whole 10 kilogram thing. And I'm putting four newtons on this 10 kilograms. And same here, I'm doing four newtons on this 10 kilograms. So it's really the same. I, I could do the same analysis and find that and actually calculate A using the separate free body diagrams. But um, if I do the, the sort of the whole system, it's 10 kilograms um, is the magnitude. Of this, so it'd be the same. Um, and my justification would really be that they're both 10 kilograms and um, total if I do the free body diagram and they both have four newtons applying on it. So let, I mean, let's just calculate like so for this one. I mean, see, we found the acceleration to be um, uh, 0.4 meters per second squared. See, when I do a free body diagram of this, this 10 kilograms and this 4 newtons, um, the 4 newtons equals ma, and that equals 10 kilograms times a. So a is equal to 4 over 10, which is equal to 0.4 meters per second squared. See, got the same as what we did when we split it all out. And so by the same token, when I do it this way, I'm also going to get 0.4 meters per second squared, just in the other direction. Is the amount the spring had stretched greater than or less than before? Well, let's look at um, some of the equations we did. We said that the spring force um, I think the first, so if I do a free body diagram of this guy, see, when I did the free body diagram of this guy, it was just the spring force acting on this block equal to A. So if the spring force is acting on block B, right, Fs is like this, then my equation ought to be Fs is equal to uh, the net force, which is equal to 8 kilograms times A, right, F equals MA. Because this is the only force, like this has MG and gravity and it has normal force, but it has no other force on it. So if the A was the same between the two, but um, now I have 8 times A instead of 2 times A, uh, it will be greater, right? So um, it will be 8 times 0.4, which would be 3.2 newtons. So you see it's gonna definitely going to be bigger. So because the force is bigger, the, uh, the, 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 the spring would have to have stretched more to exert a larger force. In the new situation, the blocks and spring move together at a constant speed of 0.5 meters seconds to the left. Block A then sticks and hits and sticks to a wall, calculate the maximum compression of the spring. Okay, so now everything is moving. It sticks to a wall. to think of what's conserved when I collide like that. Momentum would have to be conserved. So this is more of a momentum question um, than an energy question, I believe. So they're moving together at a constant velocity. It's an interesting question. Okay, so initially both of these are moving together at um, um, 0.5 meters per second. Then this sticks and hits a wall. So this stops. Actually, the momentum, never mind, it is an energy question. Uh, so when this stops, it's like I just sort of freeze it. Like there's momentum lost. The, mo the reason momentum is not conserved is there is an outside force pushing on it, it's the wall. So momentum isn't conserved in this collision because the wall is, prov is proving it an external force. So momentum isn't conserved, but basically this stops immediately, and this thing will keep going. And this energy here that was in here gets converted, like it basically, it gets converted into potential energy in the spring. So um, um, what's gonna happen here is the spring has an, no energy in it right now because um, actually maximum compression of the spring 
You see, the, the net force on all the blocks have to be zero while it's moving, because it's moving at constant speed. Okay, so there's no net force on them. So that means the spring is not exerting any force on them. Okay, because otherwise this thing would be accelerating, right? Like the net force on this guy has to be zero, so that means the spring force has to be zero. That means right now it's unrelaxed. So the potential energy in the spring is zero. So the total energy initially is just the energy of this block, one half m v squared, which is one half eight kilograms times 0.5 meters per second squared. That has to equal the energy that's going to go into the spring. Maximum compression is all of that kinetic energy gets converted into potential energy and squishes the spring. The kinetic energy of spring is one half k delta x squared. Okay. And so I want to solve for delta x because I know this is one half times 80 newtons per meter times delta x squared. So then I'm going to, uh, this is just, we'll make this 40. So I'm going to divide by 40 and then take the square root. So delta x is the square root of um, 1 half times 8 kilograms times 0.5 meters per second. Uh, quantity squared divided by 40 newtons per meter. Okay. Um, and if I do the units right, this is a meter squared per second squared newtons per meter. I, I think that, yeah, this, this, and the units are right on that. So we could just use my calculator 0. 0.5 times 8. This is the only part of the question that it actually required you to know energy. Um, I got 0. 0.224 meters. So, oh wait, no, I didn't square. Just kidding. Point five. Sorry, I can't type into the calculator. I got 0. 0.158 meters. Good thing I double checked my calculator. Always good to double check that. Okay, so I hope you guys found that helpful, at least on the free body diagram and the forces and everything. And then in the end, it was a small uh, conservation of energy. So, hope you found that helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.